Hello again and welcome to BSG TV, the official YouTube page of the Bootstrapper's Guide, the online resource for do-it-yourself entrepreneurs. I'm Tori Norman and today we're going to be continuing our conversation about Wave Accounting, the free web-based accounting software for bootstrapping entrepreneurs. In our previous episodes we talked a lot about how to create your account and some of the settings you can do to customize way of accounting to fit your specific business needs. Today we're going to finish up your, our conversation on settings and talk a little bit about products, customers, vendors, and collaborators and how they all fit in. What we're doing today is really going to build on what we've talked about in our previous episodes, especially the chart of accounts and customizing that chart of accounts. So if you haven't seen our previous videos, I highly recommend viewing them before you view this one to make sure you have an understanding of everything we're going to need before we continue today. So with that, let's jump into products here. Now I've set up some of these ahead of time just to kind of save time and keep us in our 10 minute window that I that I try to keep us to so um, let's look at what we would do to create a product you can create a product by clicking this add button here if you've got existing products you can click edit and that'll take you into the same window with the pre-filled information for that product so here I've got a product pre-filled for us the WW310B which is our blue wonder widget. You'll see that the only required fields in here are the ones with the little red asterisks. So the name is really the code or terminology that you're using to track your different products and to and to label and identify them. The description is more of your longer term that you would see showing up on like an invoice or something that helps your client understand what it is they're buying. Uh, the price is the price that you're going to sell the product at. Now that's there's kind of a caveat to that because even though it's the sales price, when you're doing a bill, sometimes it will pre-fill with that same price when you put in like a, that I purchased the WW310B. It's kind of a pet peeve I have with with wave accounting because the cost of the product should never be the same as the price of the product because otherwise we wouldn't be making a profit. So I don't like the fact that it prefills both the cost and the price with the same number. Would have rather they given us a standard cost line and a price line separately so that we can sort those out and uh, kind of uh, prevent that kind of an issue from occurring. But is what it is. Hopefully they'll get that fixed in, in future issues or er, editions of the software. Just kind of be aware that that, that occurs. And down below we've got this sell this item and buy this item check boxes. So if you have a product that you're manufacturing for resell, like let's say I'm manufacturing this blue wonder widget, I buy blue paint to help me manufacture it. I'm not going to sell that blue paint to my customer, I only buy it. So if you're talking about raw goods or components that go into your final product, you'd only want to click this buy this box. And then when you've got your final product, I'm not buying the blue Wonder Widget, I'm buying the blue paint that I'm putting into the Wonder Widget. So when you have a final product that you're putting into, like that you've been manufactured for resell, you'd want to click just the sell this box. But in this case, the blue Wonder Widget, we're buying from a third party vendor already created and just reselling it. So in this case, I both buy and sell the Wonder Widget, and so I check both of those boxes. When you do that, it's going to ask you to, cr to identify an income account that's going to get credited when the invoices are created, and an expense account that's going to be debited when you make a purchase. Now, for those of you used to working with inventory accounts, you're not going to see that here. If I click, let's see, if I click down on this expense account, you're not going to see any asset accounts here, just expense. So you've got to flow everything through the cost of goods sold. Um, again, in the essence of simplicity, Wave Accounting wants to keep things very cash based. So if you like to see those inventory balances, you'll just have to sit down at the end of the year with your accountant, figure out what your ending in inventory is, and make a transfer to your balance sheet from your cost of goods sold using a journal entry and that will set you right for tax purposes or what have you. Then you can also set the tax rate for your purchases and sales for this item. Um, we talked about those a little bit in our first episode. I'm just going to set the default of the Utah State sales tax that we created in that first episode and hit save. 
So that works for products that we that are physical products we we buy and sell. What about service items? I've created a service item here and said we do widget consulting in addition to actually selling the products and it's a per hour item. Let's see, let's call this per hour consulting. That sounds better. That'll show up on our invoice better. $125 an hour. We sell this item. We obviously don't buy it because it's not a physical product. It's just a service we provide. So let's just give it the sales account. There's no sales tax rate for it because it's a service, not a product. So we just hit save. And that would be the, the way you would create a service-based item versus a, you know, a physical product we sell. Let's look at our customers page. Whoops, skipped a jump there. Coming back. And again, you can click here to add a customer. I've already created one, so we'll go in here and look at that. The only required field is the customer's name, but I recommend that you at least put in the email address and the contact information because this is a really great way for you to keep track of who it is and who to contact regarding the accounts. Also, you can link this to a lot of mass mailing products that help you um, do some of your marketing and so it's good to have those email addresses in there where you can track them also you know this is this is just the minimum page again keeping simplicity there but they have this add additional information button and you can click down on that and it really blows up your options you, if you want to track your customers by accounts you know I can say this has this customer is account number one two three three four five I can track their phone numbers websites country their address and this is the corporate address and then in addition to that you can also add a shipping address if they've got a warehouse or third-party site that they want shipped to so there's a lot of stuff in here that you can fill in depending on what you need so that's really just kind of up to you so let's save that customer and vendors you're gonna see that the screen looks identical to the customers page with the exception that you're not going to have a shipping site because you won't ship to your vendors but everything else is there so again just kind of see what you need and, and add it on an as-needed basis the last thing I wanted to talk about is guest collaborators so here you can see that I'm currently the only person with a login into my accounting but that's not really feasible for a lot of small businesses you may have uh, a bookkeeper that works with you you might have owners that you want to be able to see you know partners or whatever you want to be able to see the have give them access to see these accounts so you can add a collaborator here and it's again pretty minimum what you need you need to give him a name we'll call him Joe accountant because I want my accountant to be able to help me with my books and it's easier if he can just log in from his office instead of coming into mine so we gotta give him his email address Oops. And then here's where you can decide if you want them to be view only. So if you've got a partner, you don't want to touch the file, but you want him to see what's in it, you can click this view only. But for the accountant, we definitely want him to be able to edit because we want him to help me with what we're doing here. And we can send him a little message here. Joe, here's that login I promised. And then if I hit save here, it's going to send Joe at accountant.com an email with a link for him to create an, his own account and gain access to my books. So this is really kind of a cool feature. There's no additional costs for the additional users. It's just a really easy way for you to get help keeping your books straight. I'm going to hit cancel though because I don't know who Joe Accountant is. And uh, But you'd hit save and then you'd, you'd have additional collaborators that you can manage from here. And with that, that's really all we have for um, settings inside of WAVE. Our WAVE accounting file is now ready for us to start entering transactions. You'll see there's one other item we didn't touch on here, which is journal transactions. That's not really a setting. That's actually a transaction. They've just hide it, hidden it here because it's not a transaction you use often. We'll teach you about that a little bit later. But... Um, we're now ready to be running some transactions. So in our next episode, we'll start looking at transactions and how they're created inside of Wave and uh, get you started actually using your file. In the meantime, we appreciate you watching these sites or these videos. I know we've got over 100 views on our videos now, so that's exciting. I appreciate your support. And if you could leave any comments on our videos, that would help me to improve them and make them more relevant to who you are and what you do. So uh, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode.